Welcome, welcome church family. It's glad to have you here tonight for our Wednesday evening Bible study here at the home, at pastor's home here. Glad to have you. I kind of miss the days when uh, we would have all of you in our home and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it won't be long before we'll be able to do that again and have that sweet fellowship of having one another in each other's homes, uh, celebrating each other and, and doing all of that. Uh, but I am glad that you are here tonight with us and uh, we hope that tonight the Bible will be an encouragement to you, a little bit of a help to you. And it's so good to see um, so many of our friends and our family members checking in with us online, letting us know that they're watching and uh, that they are with us tonight. And I hope and I trust that you all are doing very well and staying safe and uh, healthy. And I think that's a good thing. And uh, what a blessing that that is. Well, we're going to be in a couple different passages of Scripture tonight. Uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5 and uh, a couple other ones, the book of Ephesians a little bit and 1 Corinthians. But before we get into all of that, uh, what is happening in the life and ministry here at Canyon Springs Baptist Church? Um, you know, it is the month of July here in Arizona. And the one thing that we do know, that it's hot, right? We can always count on that, it is hot. And uh, one of the things that we can know about our church family uh, is that the Lord is still on the throne, amen. And uh, the church is uh, okay, we're doing well. And uh, we know that you are praying and uh, asking God to help and guide and direct us. And so. Uh, we will continue on and continue worshiping the Lord in whatever way that we have to to bring Him honor and Him glory. Uh, what are some of the things that are happening in the life and ministry? Well, uh, COVID-19 has kind of changed everything as far as a schedule, planning, all sorts of things. And so we have gone to rely upon uh, constant updates and new new things uh, weekly almost uh, to try to describe hey what's gonna happen with the well what happened there something happened Whoa. <laughs> let's see if I can get me back on track there well there's always demons in the uh, sound system isn't there or in the technology is not that right now, I don't know if some one of you hit the camera where you were in disgust of what I was trying to say, and you willed that, I'm not sure. But uh, hopefully we're back on track here just a little bit. Um, but what I, I don't even know what I was saying. How about that? COVID-19. Oh, COVID-19 should change our church, change our church schedule. Uh, the things that we could be involving in, ourselves in, and of course, <laughs> that's funny, folks. That is really funny. I think my battery's going dead. And uh, so we'll uh, see what we could do here. Because um, I don't want that to happen a bunch of times, right? And. Uh, Ah, <sighs> technology, huh? Yeah. I don't know how we're gonna do it. I think I know how we'll do it. We'll make it happen. Uh, come on over here, people. Come on over here. We're gonna make it happen. Because that's what we do around here, right? Is that what we do? Yes. We'll make it happen. I think... Uh, I think sometimes, uh, if we're not careful, we will uh, get too much into the mode where everything has to be a certain way. And of course, uh, if we're not careful, we will be reminded real quickly how when we plan, 
God laughs. God laughs. But I'm glad to be back with you. And a uh, uh, couple things uh, that's going on here in the life and ministry is um, we shared with you that we, uh, Tracy and I, were exposed to COVID a week ago last Monday. So it's been nine days, I guess it is, since we've been exposed. And uh, coming up to day seven, Tracy and I both started having some types of symptoms, some fever, uh, some chills, some body aches, uh, scratchy throat, these types of symptoms. The kind of ones that you, you know, if you had a cold or the flu or some kind of uh, thing like that, or even allergies, you might experience some of those things. And Tracy and I, we, it was interesting. We started experiencing them on the same day. And of course we knew that we were exposed uh, and we thought it was quite interesting. So we did get tested on Sunday and uh, I did not get my results back, but Tracy did and she did test positive for COVID. And uh, so what does that mean? Well, it just means that we, uh, we knew that the virus was around here. We knew that uh, people are going to get it. They do have it. We don't want anyone to get it. Uh, we don't want any one of our family members to get it. Uh, but it's probably likely that I have it. Probably likely that, well, we know Tracy does have it. Uh, but how do we respond to that? Well, you know, because of that, we have to be very careful um, because we wouldn't want to infect anyone else. Um, even though, as of right now, um, we're able to handle the symptoms and the, uh, all the different things that are happening for us, um, who knows about another individual? So we always want to be careful not to pass that on and not to continue to spread COVID-19. And so we're going to have to be very careful, quarantine ourselves, stay at home, of course, and, and not try to get that uh, anywhere else. Well, with that said, um, here we are. Uh, we're probably uh, going to have to uh, have church uh, online here, uh, probably for another two weeks, I'm guessing. I, we'll let you know on the details on that. I really haven't looked at the calendar at all, to be honest with you, uh, but I'm just guessing. Uh, that's what's probably going to happen. That way we make sure uh, that uh, everyone that was exposed, in fact, I'm pretty sure uh, Brother Panky, he's not feeling very well. Um, he had a lot of the same symptoms that I do. And so if we're all having at the same time and we all got exposed at the same time uh, in the same situation, um, you know, we're deduct reasoning here. Um, now, he did get a test, it might come back negative, uh, whatever, but we know uh, probably we have it and hopefully uh, we're able to uh, weather the storm here and manage these symptoms. And so we wanna protect you and uh, protect each other in that regard. So would you be praying for our family? Would you be praying for one another? If you know of anyone in your family that has COVID, uh, that you know is not feeling very well, that's tested, they positive, you know, that's great. We want to be praying for you and be helping you, but we'll let you know in the next couple weeks or whatever, next week and a half, um, you know, when we're all done with our quarantine, how everything is going to start to play out. Uh, I do appreciate, uh, as I was able to get the mail today at the church, many of you uh, sent in your offerings and uh, let me just let you know that is a huge blessing um, just to be confident that our people uh, understand how important giving is uh, to their worship to God and of course uh, to the overall health of Canyon Springs Baptist Church and I want to commend you church family for that and uh, you've been uh, uh, you've been you're the top one percent amen in my book on church members. You're the top 1%. You sacrificially give, you make sure you prioritize, and you're faithful in your giving. And I want to say thank you for that. 
Uh, we've even gotten folks giving from, you know, all over the United States, uh, sending in uh, some gifts. I want to say thank you to all those. Uh, that's how we're able to take care of all the bills. The bills keep on going, don't they? Um, but uh, uh, services definitely are in a little different manner. So I want you to be thinking about that. But uh, rest assured uh, that we have a God that knows all of these things, all of them. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, as we finish, uh, the study that we started uh, about being a casting Christian. We started it several weeks ago, and we've been dealing with different qualities or characteristics that really help us, uh, if you will, cast all of our burdens, all of our cares on the Lord. And let's go to 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5. And uh, I wanted to kind of draw your attention kind of by way of uh, maybe review here just a little bit. Um, we've been talking about that. Uh, problems and trials, what, are, what, are, what, what is that? That's called um, things that we all go through and we probably all are going to go through. Um, they are part of life. I don't think we can avoid them. I want to avoid them. Uh, somebody said, well, Pastor, how do you feel about getting COVID if you did get it or not or whatever? My test hasn't come back. Uh, but I said, you know, I do the best that I can and trust God for the rest. Uh, because you can't go through life uh, so worried about everything in this world because uh, you'll just end up going crazy. You'll end up kind of not missing the real important things. You miss God's provision. You miss God's love. You'll, you'll miss the people that God brings into your life. And if you're so concerned about certain things. And so we got to learn to trust God. In fact, we're talking about trusting God in just a little bit. Now, <clears throat> when you have a burden and you have a trial, when you have something that's really heavy on your heart, uh, what do we do? Well, we typically do a pretty good job at throwing them off of our life. Sometimes we do a good job and we cast them upon the Lord like he wants us to. But a lot of the times we do a lot of, we do a good job at casting them and throwing them uh, in all sorts of places. Uh, sometimes we do to the people that we love the most. Sometimes it's, um, we just ignore things. and But we are to throw upon our burdens and they're supposed to go on the Lord because he can be, that burden bearer in our life, okay? And so we need to be doing that. Heavy loads are in grave need of someone strong enough to carry them, strong enough to carry them. And so we have to learn to cast our cares on him. We have to learn to uh, be ready to trust the Lord, cast our care on him and all of that. Now, we talked about a couple things in this chapter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, some qualities. And so I want to kind of just, I guess, review and just quickly state what that was. And uh, we, I want you to notice in the middle of verse 7, casting all your care on him for he careth for you. I want you to notice verse number five and verse number six. It talks about humility. In verse five, it says that we should be clothed in humility. Okay. Uh, verse six says that we are to humble ourselves, uh, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Okay. So interesting about this idea of if you're going to be effective, you have to learn to be humble. You have to exhibit uh, a humble lifestyle. Pride is nowhere to be found in your life. Um, it says to be clothed, and then he gives a few promises. He says, humble yourselves, that he may exalt you in due time. And so the two promises that people get 
when they exercise a lack of pride is they get, if you will, God's grace, which we need, right? And then we get exaltation. And so we humble ourselves and then God lifts us up in due time. And so we get a few good promises. Whereas if you like to worry and be anxious and uh, just fret yourself over everything, there is no promise for you, friend. There, there's no promise for you. You don't get a promise for being anxious and worried. You are supposed to cast your care upon him. And so we need to make sure that we are doing that. Um, we need to make sure that we are going to the Lord in the right areas. One of the things, if you look at verse number eight, uh, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So he wants to devour you. He wants to, if you will, uh, take a big gulp of you and just devour you to nothing. That's what Satan wants to do. And so our job is, as we go through this life, we need to be humble, yes. We need to make sure pride doesn't come into our life. But we need to make sure that we are actively resisting Satan. Um, <laughs> uh, it was kind of fun last week. Uh, I had a little friend with me. Um, and uh, he, had, he was a little devil mask, I guess. And I had him a little mannequin there. And uh, uh, preaching and teaching while he was there it was kind of weird. But I think I got my point across, right? And uh, well, later that night... I put the mannequin in the girls' ba uh, bathroom, and I shut the door so that the girls, when the girls would open up the door, he would be right there as they would go in the bathroom. Well, you know, my girls are just so used to getting scared and so used to it. It didn't phase them one bit, not one bit. They just were like, Pfft. but, but I've taught them well. You know what they did? They just shut the door afterwards and left the mask and the mannequin right there for the next person. I was so proud of them. I was just so proud of them. They were, it was amazing. So one after the other, each girl got a chance to get scared. And, you know, none, none of them really kind of got scared until the last one. And her name begins with an E and ends with an A. And it sounds like Ilana. But she uh, she got quite scared, and I I had a nice little chuckle. In fact, it just brings joy to my heart right now thinking about it. But, but uh, so we had a little fun with that. But we need to actively resist the devil. We need to make sure that we are not giving in to him or his devices or giving him a foothold into our life. We need to stand against and we need to oppose. Some of you uh, have a hard time, you know what, understanding what is right and what is wrong. You like to kind of walk the fence. You like to kind of blur the lines, they call it. Do you know what? When you actively resist the devil, you know really clearly what is right and what is wrong. And so let's not be naive to think that we can just kind of go through life and uh, have these evil things going on around us and guess what uh, but you know what it's no big deal listen you are going to find yourself worried and anxious and overloaded with the cares of this life because you're not actively resisting satan and the burdens are going to be given right back to you, you remember my illustration i gave to you last week when you when you go to the world and satan and say you know what i have a problem he gives you a bottle, a bottle filled with alcohol. He wants to numb your senses. He wants to numb it, make it better for a moment. But you know how that works, don't you? It only temporarily fixes it and, in fact, causes more problems. In fact, goes deeper, deeper, and then you try to combat that with another thing and another thing and another thing. I love the story about my dad. 
He, tell, he told this many times to me about when he was trying to quit smoking. I didn't know this till later, but he wasn't necessarily trying to quit smoking willingly. I'll, I'll just tell you that. I think my mom had something to do with it. Like, Rich, you're going to quit smoking. Uh, so what he did was he was smoking. So he was like, man, I got to stop this smoking or... You know what, I got my family, my wife, you know what, I don't want to do this, this is a bad habit. So he's like, well, what I'll do is I'll just cut back a little bit on smoking, and what I'll do is um, uh, I will just start chewing a little bit. That'll kind of get me, you know, off of that. So he started to chew uh, tobacco, and then he's spitting it everywhere, and pretty soon mom gets a hold of it, and, and he's like, well, okay. Uh, I'm chewing a little bit. Maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll go get myself some of this gum stuff, this nicotine gum. And so he'll start che start chewing the gum. So he's smoking, chewing, and chewing the nicotine gum all at the same time. All because he wants to quit smoking. Hmm. <laughs> so he's chewing the gum and chewing the tobacco. He's quit smoking, but then he says, but I got to get off of this tobacco. It's hard, so I'll just start smoking a little bit more, so it'll be a little easier to get off the tobacco. I'll start smoking a little bit, and then pretty soon it'll all work out. Well, he tells me that story, and it's kind of interesting. By the way, my dad did get victory over that, and uh, I mean, it took it's one of the hardest things I think that people have to do. I have some ideas why it's kind of maybe one of the hardest things, but... It is very, very difficult to do. And uh, finally, he did get victory over that. But this is kind of what we do. One guy told me one time, he says, you know what? I said, how did, you know, how, how come you quit, how come you started smoking again? And he said, well, uh, I wanted to test myself every so often, so I leave a carton of cigarettes in my trunk. And I, and I go to my trunk once in a while, and I look at it, and I say, see, I'm strong. But what happened one day when he, he got an emotional heartache, um, you know, somebody looked at him wrong or, you know, what, told him the truth about himself or something. He got all hurt. The first place he went to the trunk and started smoking again, right? So what's the, Pastor, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, listen, you have to actively resist Satan. You can't play around. You can't tell me you're trying to quit smoking and drive around with a carton of cigarettes in your trunk. You follow? You gotta get serious about this, and this is why if you are gonna fo start following the Lord and being this casting Christian, you have got to say, I'm all in and I'm going to actively resist this temptation. I'm not going to leave the door open like what we do, don't we? We leave the door open. Let's be careful. Now, I want to kind of touch with you. If you go to verse number 10, not only should you actively resist Satan, but... You need to be thinking about uh, this thought. We know that we should be casting Christians, but look look down at what it says here in verse 9, and then I'm, we're going to read verse 10, okay? It says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, he says in verse 10, But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that we have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So here's the thought that I want to kind of leave you with as we're thinking about the qualities of a casting Christian. Not only... Uh, does he resist Satan? Not only 
does he have humility being a transforming characteristic in his life, but he has learned to trust the Lord through anything. Folks, we got to do this during this time. It's interesting that a little virus that we know nothing really about um, has affected us so much, huh? We can't really even see it. We know it's there, but we can't see it. And it's affecting us in such a way. But he says here that I want you to resist Satan knowing that the afflictions are accomplished in your brethren. It's just telling us that there's always going to be something and there's always someone like you that are going through something that someone else is going through. If we're not careful, we'll have the complex that, you know what, I'm the only one having to go through this. Uh, why me, Lord, do I have coronavirus? Or why does Tracy have coronavirus? Well, listen, let me just tell you, <clears throat> there are a lot of other people that have it too. And maybe why not us? Maybe we got to start thinking about how we have to trust God through this, knowing that the afflictions are accomplished in other people just like us. And it says in verse 10 that we get grace. It says, but the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal Glory. Notice that phrase, unto his eternal glory. Think with me now for just a little bit. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, okay? Ephesians chapter 2. And then look at verse number 6. The Bible says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now over there in 1 Peter, he says that we've been called by the God of all grace, right? Has called us unto his eternal glory. Now in verse 6, it says, we've been raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have to demonstrate a total trust in God because of what God has said. God has said that him and us are sitting together in a higher place. And when you realize that that is your position, you can trust God and just cast all your care upon him. You don't want it back. You don't need it back because you trust him because you are seated with him in heavenly places. Look at verse seven of chapter two of Ephesians that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. We have to trust the Lord, trust his goodness, trust his kindness. Okay. Now, if we're thinking about our text there, how that we've been called under the eternal glory by Christ Jesus, um, we need to just trust what God says. We don't need to worry. We can cast our care on him. But I'm suffering right now. Look what the passage teaches us. It says, I want you to know that you could cast your care on me even though you're suffering, even though you're hurting, even though life is not picturesque, even though you're struggling. It says there's a reason here. In verse 10, it says, after that you've suffered while, the suffering will make you perfect. It will establish you it will strengthen you. It will settle you. This is why we need to actively cast our care on him and trust the Lord. Because during this process, we are not only just going through it, 
we are getting the benefits of suffering for his name's sake. We're getting the blessings of being matured or being made perfect. We are being established. We are being strengthened and we are being settled. I don't know about you. There's a lot of things in this world that are unsettling. The unknown is unsettling. But if I trust the Lord, I can be settled. And I can know where I sit today, seated with him in the heavenlies. And so I think it's a good thought to learn how to trust the Lord. Let's look at one more passage. We'll be done tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me see here. Look with me now. I believe it is uh, 17. First Corinthians, no, 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 I'm sorry, Second Corinthians, so I'm, I'm, Second Corinthians, <coughs> excuse me, chapter four. And then uh, look at verse 17 with me, okay? Um, we'll start in verse 16. For which cause we faint not, though through our outward man perish, that's talking about our flesh, yet the inward man, the spiritual man, is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. You see, we should be learning to trust the Lord and cast our care on him and that kind of Christian, he is demonstrating his trust in the Lord. Because whatever you've got going on bur burden-wise, you realize I can't handle it, I can't hold it, I can't carry it, I'm gonna give it. And you are trusting that whatever you're going through is gonna be like what verse 17 says, but for a moment. I, I think it's interesting that Paul commented on this affliction. He said, our light affliction. Now, if you kind of just read in the passages before, and you know a little bit about Paul's life, the afflictions that he suffered at the hands of not only just Satan himself, but the hands of the Jews, in the hands of wicked people, it wasn't necessarily light in my book. Shipwrecked, beaten, stoned, you know, these types of things. But Paul was telling the church, this was our light affliction. And he says, it works for us far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. So the suffering down here the recompense or the reward for it is greater up there than it is down here. And that's pretty encouraging. And then he says in verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So our trust in an eternal God, the God of all grace, okay? And uh, we need to learn how to do that. That's what a casting Christian does. He grows in his trust for what the Lord is doing. So guess what we're gonna do, church? We're gonna trust the Lord. How's it gonna work out? I don't know. How's it gonna end up? I don't know. But I know at the end, God's still gonna be on a throne. I know that he's gonna be good to all of his children. And so guess what? Let's just trust the Lord today. Let me ask you this question as we close. <clears throat> Are you tonight 
Do you have something on your heart, in your life, uh, that's a heavy burden? I want to encourage you. Cast all your care on him, for he careth for you. Remember what we said about that verse, how it helps us understand something? You can't have both. You could either carry your burdens or you could have God's carrying. But you can't have both. And so I want to invite you, take those burdens, cast upon the Lord. He's strong enough. And uh, let him help you uh, go through life. And be encouraged. And learn to trust. Actively resist. I hope that will help you tonight. Uh, many of you asked how I am doing. We're doing well surprisingly. And so continue to pray for us. Uh, I got some people just calling me, I guess. That's, I think someone just tried to call me. But <clears throat> I got some cookies at the door and uh, I got a nice meal. And uh, I want to say thank you for those of you that uh, bless us with those kind of things. We trust that the Lord will bless you. Let me know if there's anything that we can do for you. And we want to be a blessing and help to you no matter we can. But we'll continue to pray and continue to be faithful and continue to trust. God bless. Have a wonderful day.